Hello, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. I'm Emily and welcome to my Disney Villains series. This is episode three and it's part two of my Madame Mim series, I guess, if you will. And today we're going to color her in. I'm using alcohol markers. I've just got a few limited colors as I've done in the previous videos, which I will link in this video. I'm using very limited supplies just to keep it super simple, make it super accessible for anybody who would want to follow along with me. So I'm using alcohol markers and I'm using Posca pens, which are acrylic just for outlining and for highlights. And as I did in the Madame Medusa video, I'm going to put on the screen my final drawing so you can see where I'm going and the colors I've chosen. I will have all of my supplies linked in the description box, but as always, feel free to change it or use whatever supplies that you want. So I think we're gonna just dive right in. No reason to waste any time. I did lighten my pencil lines a little bit just so that they don't get smeared. And a really good way to do that is with a kneed eraser can kind of roll it up like a, a little log there and then you can literally just kind of roll it across your paper and it'll pick up that pencil just enough to help it so that it, it doesn't really smear so just another a little tip for you all right so keep that off to the side and I do also have my circle template for whenever I go in and do the eyes again I think we're gonna go ahead and just start with her hair it's a nice big area to kind of get finished. I'm going to color her hair and it, her hair is purple. I'm actually using lavender. It's number 83 from Artbeat. Again, it's not going to be a, an exact match, but that's okay. We're just kind of playing around, so it's not a big deal. I'm going to start with the chisel. I feel like sometimes this is easier for larger areas. If I need to go back in with the brush nib to get into the little little crevices, I can do that. It's a big area and you wanna move quickly when you are using alcohol markers. So you can just kind of start someplace. I might kind of start where this would be a little bit of a part probably. And again, remember you don't really want to outline, you just wanna kinda, of, it is a little harder to use it in those crevices. So I'm gonna kinda of leave those alone for now. And I'm just following the shape of her hair. And remember, we will go back over at the other direction as well to kind of help with any lines. This chisel nib is a little bit weird. Not all markers are created equal, but I'm still trying to move fairly quickly. And I don't want to really have any little gaps in there per se. It's not the end of the world because we can fill those back in. I'm just going to avoid any tight little areas and go back in and get those. I'm going to turn this upside down for a second. I know that's tough when I do that, but that way I can keep that chisel nib right along my pencil line, keep that nice and clean. And it's actually, it's okay to go over that eyebrow because they're black. So you won't even see that purple. And then I'll go back in here, like I said, and kind of fill in those little pointy areas that are kind of hard to get with the chisel nib. And if you go outside the pencil line, it's not the end of the world because we will be outlining it so it'll kind of clean that up. So I'm just going to take some time to color her hair in. I'm just going to set this part to music because I'll just be repeating this step. So it doesn't take 500 years. I will speed it up a little bit as well. You can always slow down the video if you need to. So I will see you when I am finished filling this in.
So I'm going to leave that like that for now. I'm going to go back over it a couple of times, probably get rid of those lines. I'll go the opposite direction and then I'll kind of go in with some flicking motion, just to add some texture. But for now, I'm just going to leave that. I'm going to go to her eyes and they are like a limey, not neon green, but a very kind of limey green. So I'm actually going to use yellow green and it's a hoo hoo. And I'm just going to use the brush nib for that and carefully try to stay in the lines. As I've said previously, I tend to, if you push too hard, then you'll go outside the line, which isn't the end of the world, but the eyes seem to get bigger and bigger and bigger <laughs> because I keep going outside the lines. So I just try to be careful. And again, it will be outlined. And that's why I always have to turn my paper, especially if I'm using the brush nib so I can get that right up against that that line and then this is a perfect example of how not all markers and colors are created equally this these are two different lines there's art beak and art marker they're both number two old red but you'll see that the the colors the shades are completely different I'm using the art marker old red for the inside of her mouth. So I'll put that in real quick. Not pushing down very hard if it's a smaller area so that it doesn't make it any fatter. And I wanna be real careful around that white tooth. Is anybody taking part in Inktober? I almost did, but I'm so busy. It's it's so hard to do something that's going to be every single day. I almost did a series on my channel too, but it was just going to be too much. So that's why I just went ahead and just did the Disney villains, which I think is super fun. All right, let's go ahead and go back up to her hair. We will fill in her shirt as well, but let's go back up to her hair. And I'm just going to kind of go the opposite direction, like I said before. I'm gonna maybe start with the brush nib this time, except for kind of in those pointed areas because it's kind of hard to, and you wanna move fast, but also try to, you know, stay in your, within your lines. But again, we will be outlining, so it will kind of clean up any areas that are kind of weird, I guess, or that get get outside the line. It's it's not the end of the world, as I say all the time, because we're just having fun and it's okay if it's not perfect. I've asked in other videos, but would love to know if you have a favorite villain. I've never really been like a huge Disney princess lover person necessarily. I, though I do love a cup a few like Belle I love her so much because I'm a big reader I love Merida from Brave because I just love her independence plus I love the accent I like that movie quite a bit too I tried to watch Snow White a couple years ago I hadn't seen it for a really long time and I could not watch it because I could not stand her voice <laughs> Snow White's voice I was like oh my gosh that is so annoying you also have to let me know in the comments if you've enjoyed this series. Let me know if you have any ideas of anything you might want me to tackle on my channel. Always love to have some feedback. When it comes to big areas as well, you want to make sure you're kind of picking a marker that's nice and juicy because if not, you'll really see the lines no matter what you do. And sometimes because it's a big area, I'll have to go over it a few times to really kind of try to get those areas blended. I love alcohol markers, but they have their challenges just like any, any art supply does. I'm using the side of the marker, not just the tip whenever it's a larger area as well. The hair tends to be the longest part of these videos. It just takes a while. I usually edit a little bit of it out so you're not watching the entirety of me coloring it in because it does take a little while. I'll, I'm doing five villains in total. I've mentioned in other videos, but this is number three. Like I said, kind of in the intro. I have two more. 
So there's two more Wednesdays after this one. And my upload schedule is on Wednesdays. And as I've said before, my channel is ever evolving. I'm learning so much. I'm evolving as an artist and that's why I called my channel Emily's Art Journey. I've been pretty serious about my art for like the last six years or so, but I've always been very interested in, in art. I battled addiction for about 30 years of my life. Not quite that long, probably 25. So I kind of lost my way for a while and then I found my art again and it's been very therapeutic and has really contributed to my sobriety. So I'm super happy that I that I kind of found it again. I'm going to go back over the mouth. The more times you go over it, the darker it will be. Okay, I'm going to go back up into her hair for a little bit. Like I said, I'm not using a ton of colors, but there are some areas that just are a little bit more time consuming. I'm going to kind of start flicking the marker, making sure I have all the areas covered and flicking it gives it texture, but then it also kind of helps those other lines blend in a little bit better. And I really like to try to clean up those edges, but I'm following her natural curvature of her hair directionality. I talk about that all the time and that matters when it comes especially to alcohol markers because you can see the the brush lines. And after I go this direction, kind of flicking it, I can also, you know, go back the other way if I feel like I still see too many lines and I don't like it. With alcohol markers, I kind of know what to expect. And sometimes I feel like I'm just going to have to deal with, with seeing those lines a little bit. I don't like this color, so I'm actually going to go over that with Deep Violet and it's an art marker. It's too blue and she's purpley. I like Yzma. It's funny how I, I do love purple, so it's funny that I kind of was drawn to two purple ones. Of course, I love Maleficent and she's purpley. The next one's going to be fun. I'm going to change it up a little bit to kind of tie in Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So I'm going to change some stuff and bring some pink into it, which I think is going to be kind of fun. It'll be kind of pop arty, I guess. Still super simple and along the lines of the ones I've already been doing, but it's fun to take artistic license and you know, make things your own and make some changes. I'm going to go back into her hair one more time. I, it might, well, probably twice, but I just, I don't like the, the streaks that I'm seeing there. I'm going to try to blend those a little bit. You also see the streaks more if your marker is kind of losing its ink. And I think this one's getting a little bit, maybe a little bit dried out. There we go. I think that'll work. Especially when we put some highlights and, like I said, outline it. I think that'll that'll work out well. We'll go ahead and color in the rest of her shirt, which is kind of like a a brick red. But here's you'll you'll notice this is also a number two old red. It's art marker, and then this is a number two old red art beak. So you'll see that not all colors are equal in each marker line. I'm going to go back up to the eyes because again, the more you go over it, the darker it will be. So I'm going to go back over it just along the eyebrow line and darken it in right there because there would be a shadow. And I'm just going to keep that for now. I may go back over it a little bit more once I put her pupil in. Oh, you know what I just did? I picked the wrong color. <laughs> so I'm going to go back over that with my original color and it'll blend together. go. Yeah, her hair look, it's a little crazy, but that's okay. 
I should have really tested to make sure the marker was nice and full of ink before I used that one. So I have a couple different sizes that I'm going to use. I like to use the smallest one, which is a 0.7 when it comes to facial features, just so that's not super chunky. So I'm going to start with that. Except her eyebrows, I will put in, I will color that in with a little bit of a thicker one just to not have to use as much of the ink. But I'm just going to outline everything that I've drawn. And I take my time with the outlining. I feel like it's important to do that. So you can try to keep your, your lines nice and crisp. And I tend to work left to right because I am right handed. That way I'm not smearing through. This dries pretty quickly, but I have smeared before. So you just want to be careful of that. Is anybody going to dress up for Halloween? My uh, kids are a little older, so they don't, they don't go trick or treating anymore, but I still dress up. I'll be a witch. I'm usually a witch. <laughs> At least the last few years, I have a really fun costume. I went to a run fair this summer and got some really cool pieces that I can't wait to wear again because they're just, you know, they're not things I would necessarily wear in my, day, my everyday life. Although maybe I'll start because we only live once, right? So we should express ourselves however we want to. She's funny. She's not in the Sword in the Stone for too long, but I just, I think she's hilarious. So I thought she'd be a fun one to add to the villains. Around her hairline, I'm actually gonna make that a little bit thicker. So this is a 1.3 millimeter. And these are basically paint markers, like acrylic markers, so they don't really show the lines like the alcohol markers do. I painted Madame Medusa with acrylic markers, and I think I'll, I might paint the next one with acrylic markers as well. go in and put a little bit of texture in her hair with the marker, the Posca pen. So I'm going to go in. This one's a little bit chunky. I think it'll just help kind of get the paint down faster. But I'm just going to go in and kind of put some directional lines to add some texture into her hair using just kind of quick little wispy lines and definitely following the directionality of her hair. I kind of made this be like a part right here, so I'm going to have things kind of stem out from that spot. And I'm going to go back over a, a few of these areas just to darken to make it so that it looks like a little bit of a shadow as well. You can go in with a little bit more of that hair color if you want, just to add a few more little directional texture lines. I'll be throwing this marker away. I'm not sure if these are refillable. I know some are, but I don't remember if Art Beak is. I'll have to look that up. She doesn't have any eyelashes. The last couple of them that I've done had super crazy eyelashes. <laughs> now I'm going to go ahead and put a few highlights in her hair and maybe a couple just in a few spots on her outfit and then I'll put her pupils in and then I think we'll be done. Again, I'm taking artistic liberty, adding the highlights and the directional lines. You know, back in the day when they did the characters, they were just kind of solid colors. But you certainly don't even have to do this step if you don't want to. One thing you can do if you've done something and you're like, oh no, I don't like it. If you have an acrylic marker, you can actually go over the alcohol marker, so I might actually do that because I'm not, I don't love that with her eyes. It's hard to find a lime-ish green, so this is just acrylic painter markers. They're not my favorite, but it'll work. 
and then you can just kind of carefully go in and cover all of that up. And it just kind of helps, lets you start anew. You might have to go over it a couple times, maybe let it dry in between, but it's, I'm a mixed media artist for a reason. I, I will use whatever I want in order to achieve my goal. There we go. Let that dry for just a second, and then I'll go back in and put in the pupil. So in one of the spots, it looks like there was bubbles or something kind of floating around her. I'm going to actually go ahead and put those in. I haven't done a lot of backgrounds in the previous ones. I did kind of go back and put a little bit of a glow around them. I'll have to show you that. But I thought I would take the circle template and absinthe, because they're kind of green, and just put a couple of those in just so that it's not so just bland in the background. You don't have to do this. I'll go ahead and put these in just while the eyes are drying. It's not super easy to use a template with markers because again you have to make sure you're getting along the edge exactly the same and you want to work quickly because it'll bleed so it might be better to put them in with a pencil and then fill them in which I think is what I'm gonna do I will time lapse this obviously because if not we'll be here for 500 years That's fun, just to add a little bit of some, something. I'm gonna try to go over this. I don't know if it's gonna work or not, just to put in that darker, I don't think, it, well, maybe a little bit, just that shadow line I was talking about earlier. It did a little bit, you can kind of see it. And now I will put in her pupils, and then I believe we will be done. Yeah, I think that's it. This was a fun one. I love it when they have a, a funky colored hair. I hope you're enjoying this series. And if you are, you can put some, maybe some purple hearts in the comment section. And don't forget to give this video a like and follow me if you're not already. I really appreciate you tuning in every Wednesday. And I will see you next week with the next villain. I may do a little sneak peek at some point. But um, again, thank you so much for being here. And I will see you next Wednesday. Bye.